Um, so we are talking about mentoring and challenging times. And I'd like to just give a little background about what gave rise to this. Can anybody take any sort of guess about what gave rise to this workshop? The election of Trump. Exactly. So, <laughs> so no, absolutely. It's the, um, this coronavirus outbreak and just um, a complete change in our way of life in such a short period of time. And this has generated a lot of stress for everyone. And so I thought this was a great time um, to talk about mentoring in these kinds of times and the things that we can expect to see as well as, um, you know, how we can um, approach our mentoring in these kinds of times. So just briefly, the workshop objectives are to discuss the challenges of mentoring students in a social distancing situation. So this is um, very specific to this time, but you will also find what I have to say will apply in good times, bad times, and a whole lot of other situations. Discuss tips for maintaining supportive mentoring relationships in the face of these challenges and share experiences and helpful practices that we've used to adjust to this change. So um, I hope it comes across that not only am I looking to provide information, um, but I found that the greatest source of information comes from you, um, things you have encountered and the ways you've handled them in over the past few weeks. So the first thing I want to do is just talk about the challenges. What kinds of things can we expect to see in these times? And um, first and foremost, uh, fear. Everybody's afraid of the unknown. We, none of us knows what is going to happen. And um, specifically fears in terms of what your mentees, your students may be experiencing about their education. Um, students, what's going to happen this summer? What's going to happen this fall? Um, how is this going to affect my path to graduation? Even those who are graduating this spring, um, you know, not knowing in terms of what schools they may be going to, what's going to happen with those schools, is everything I've put into place thus far still going to happen? So that unknown is generating a lot of fear amongst our students. Also, they're dealing with fear, fears about health. Um, this is a great generalization, but I will say it seems to me just anecdotally that our students are not so much worried about their own health, but they are concerned about the health of their loved ones, parents, grandparents, people who may be more susceptible um, to COVID-19 than they are and they have concerns about whether those people will be all right in this environment. Also anxiety. I have spoken to, in just one this morning, faculty members whose students are coming to them and saying, I just have so much anxiety about this. And not so much about, you know, where am I gonna be in the fall or what's gonna happen with my parents or their jobs or things like that but also just anxiety about this is the first time I've taken this test in this environment. And I, I have a lot of anxiety about how I'm going to do and how I'm, you know, so it's, it's from the, the larger things to the smaller things um, that they're feeling anxious about. And we're, we all know the financial impact. This virus has shut down our economy. And many of our students, your mentees are dealing with parents, um, and loved ones who have lost their source of income. And students are affected by that. They are now back in their households and they are seeing firsthand the impact of, of how this is impacting their families and just wanting to make sure that they'll be okay. And then isolation. Um, I am not a sociologist, I'm not a psychologist, although I'm a wannabe social scientist, um, but we are, you know, we are social beings. We, we love interacting. We need human interaction, human touch. And right now we are being asked to stay away from one another for our own safety. And, um, you know, the social distancing, sheltering in place um, that can leave 
a lot of our students feeling isolated and feeling lonely, um, particularly if they have inadequate or no technology, because I can speak for myself in that it makes a great deal of difference to me with my CAT colleagues. I see them really on a daily basis. It's, I don't think a day has gone by, um, a work day has gone by that I have not seen their faces and interacted with them that way. And I did not realize what that meant to me in terms of us working together as a team. And so when your students or your mentees lose that ability, um, it can have a pretty harsh impact on them. So um, keep those things in mind as we get, begin to talk about um, what our mentees are coming to us with um, in terms of challenges. So I want to, you know, now that we've generally talked about um, the sort of challenges that we may see facing us, I want to talk about some of the helpful practices um, that really can help to, to, to cut into that fear, that anxiety, that loneliness, um, that students may be experiencing. First of all, and I'll go through them very briefly, and then we'll talk about them one by one. The first is establish and maintain a connection with your mentees. Um, you know, making sure we keep in touch, that we keep our hands, our proverbial hands on them. Um, listen with compassion and empathy, and that Sounds like it goes without saying, but it really doesn't. It, it really needs to be stated and it really needs to be intentional. Acknowledge what is happening and we'll talk about the importance of doing that. Educate yourself. Um, and uh, we're really going to focus in on why um, understanding the situation that we're in and how we can address that situation can benefit not only our mentees, but also ourselves. I'm sorry, whenever I get off screen, if there you go. And uh, one of the ones I feel most importantly is practice self-care. Um, it, it goes back to that old airline saying, you know, when if the pressure decreases in the cabin, oxygen mask will drop down. And please put on your mask before you attempt to assist someone else in putting on theirs. And there's a reason for that. Because if you lose consciousness, not only do you not have your mask on, but the person you were trying to help, you can't help them either. So let's start with establish and maintain a connection. So the first is to reach out regularly. Um, and what regularly is, is up to you. But make the attempt to reach out. Um, there are certain students that I mentor, um, not ones that I necessarily teach. I have taught them in the past for certain students that I mentor. And one of the things I make sure I do is on a weekly basis, I send an email saying, you know, how's it going? You seem to be really busy. Are you okay? Just to let them know I'm thinking about them and opening up the door that if they need any help or if they just need to talk to me, that I'm here. Um, use the available technology to minimize feelings of isolation. I already, um, talk to you about how important it is for me to see my cat colleagues pretty much on a daily basis. And I don't think that that's any different for our mentees. It's one thing to send an email and say, I'm thinking about you, Hope All is well. If you need me, reach out. It's another thing if we pick up a phone um, and, you know, I tell the students, just call my office number you know, it'll come to my cell phone. It's another thing to speak on the phone. It is on a completely different level when I sit and I'm on a Zoom meeting and I can see the student, I can see how they're looking, I can see their facial expressions, and I can comment on what I see and what I think may be happening. So um, to the extent possible, 
make sure you grasp onto the technology that we have available to us. Um, because the more you do, that's the better you can connect. Um, engage in dialogue that reduces anxiety. And uh, this is a, a very um, sort of a tightrope to walk is the way I see it. Because what you always want to do is be honest. You do not want to paint a picture that is something other than what the reality is. So that's not at all what I'm suggesting. But what I am saying is craft things in a way that always puts together for a positive light. For example, it's like um, I was talking to the bill technicians the other day. And um, one of the things we were talking about was some things that had been canceled and that they couldn't do. And one of the things I said, I said, well, the beautiful thing is um, that's true. And that's a bit of a challenge. You all cannot be in the lab at this point but we are all still working, we are all still being paid, and there are many things we can do outside of lab work to really move ourselves forward. So what I did not try to do is to make the situation seem something that it wasn't, but I did try to focus on the positive aspect and try to get them to focus that way also. And, um, this will come up later when we talk about educating yourself, but directing your mentees to the appropriate resources when necessary. Um, this is extremely important, again, to understand the gravity of what we're dealing with in terms of mental and emotional health, and then to understand what resources are out there, particularly those provided by the university where the student can go. Um, our uh, Office of Wellness, that's a shame, right, right off the top of my head, um, and places like that where we can provide the students some place to go to talk about to address the things that they're feeling. So again, keep, make that connection and just keep it strong um, as we work our way through this thing. And I just wanna pause again, I can't see anything but my screen, uh, if there are any questions. No, no questions in the chat yet, but if anybody wants to just type stuff in, I can um, kind of address them as we go along. Be sure Tiara can see them. Thank you. But I, I just, I do want to reiterate that it has been, um, we've been busy in CAT, as you all know, because most of you we've seen almost every day too, <laughs> or at least a couple times a week. Uh, but it has been really important uh, for us to, you know, just, I mean, I think we still pretty feel pretty connected. So I think that's a really good point to think about students. Um, are, are they getting that? Are they getting that from their classes? And it just depends on how, how interactive the teachers, teachers being. Exactly. So next, listen with compassion and empathy. And you start this one off just simple. Sometimes just listen. Sometimes people just want to be heard. They're not looking for a solution. They're not looking. Sometimes they just want to get it out. And just that act of getting those things out, you know, puts them in a place where it's like, okay, I can move forward. I can deal with things. So always put yourself in a position where your mentee understands that you are listening to what they say and you want to hear what they say. Again, this is something that's intentional. Um, good listening is a skill. It's a skill that we all um, can develop and, and get better at. Um, but the more your mentee understands that, you know, you want to hear them, you want to understand what they're saying and what they're feeling, um, the more likely they are to, to be honest and complete in what they say to you. Um, always want to avoid judging your mentee's feelings or reactions to situations. And again, this is not necessarily intuitive. Um, we are dealing in a perfect example. Um, it's not our students, although I have student examples. I am watching the news and I see people out um, who are protesting 
to get the economy open back up, to get cities and towns open back up so that the economy can get jump started again. And I initially, when I saw that, I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? Do you not understand that you can send us backwards? And then it had to dawn on me. It's like, first of all, you are not in their situation. You are still working. Um, you are still receiving a paycheck and you don't know how these people have been impacted by all of these businesses closing. You have no idea what's going on in their household. And it forced me to say, you know, basically I understand what they are saying and why they are out there protesting. And hopefully we can move forward in such a way that we can be safe and open up the economy. So I said all of that just to say that um, you may not necessarily initially understand your mentee's emotions, what they're saying, their, their perspective. But if you listen to them, um, the more you understand, you'll, as you listen to them, you'll understand more where their perspective is coming from and um, can be more empathetic to what they're saying and what they're feeling. Um, same thing, uh, the more you understand the situation they're in, and uh, I think it's a people thing, but I know students are very much like that. You're going to get the bare minimum information until they feel safe. They're going to tell you exactly what it is they need to tell you and no more until they feel safe enough to open up and give you information about their situation. And the safer you make them feel, the more heard you make them feel, that's the more information you'll get and the better you'll understand, again, why they're feeling what they're feeling. A big one, and this is talking to me, avoid trying to solve the problem. Um, there was a period of time, and, and please make no mistake, when I listen to a student, when they come to me with an issue, I, am, I always have an ear for what can we do to make the situation better. But I have also learned that sometimes it's not about me solving the problem. Um, so you, again, you wanna listen, you wanna give that empathetic ear, and you wanna be able to direct your mentee where it is they need to go to, to get the best resolution to their situation. And many times that's not us. Um, we, we may be the first line, the first people to hear the issue and to be able to triage. But, um, you know, we are not the problem solvers. We are not the ones who can put those things into place to resolve the issue. So just keep that in mind and don't put that pressure or that burden on yourself that it's your job to solve the problem. And again, present resources and options um, where they're appropriate. One of the most powerful uh, weapons that we have in trying to keep our students healthy physically, emotionally, educationally, um, is, is knowledge about what's out there for them to lean on in this difficult situation. And if you don't know the resources that are out there, or if you don't present those resources to your mentees, um, I think we're doing them a, a disservice. So again, we want to be able, we want to be prepared to hear what the student's issue is, um, push them in the right direction, and hopefully get them back on track. Um, one, of, I think this is my second favorite one, is acknowledge what is happening. Um, I told you honesty is extremely important, um, but honesty in a positive light goes a long, long way. So we want to acknowledge that we are in a pandemic and um, that it's having some pretty harsh effects right now. And open up, don't force anything, but open up the floor if they want to talk about it, if they want to talk about what's going on, how it's affecting them. Again, when you acknowledge it, you kind of lay out an invitation for them to give you feedback and tell you what they're feeling. Um, if it's more of this 
kind of Pollyanna view of things or not so truthful view of things. Um, all that happens with the mentee is that they end up saying, well, we are not living in the same world. So I'll just keep, you know, keep my world to myself. So again, you want to acknowledge that. Understand and honor your emotions and those of your mentee. Um, I have no problem whatsoever admitting, although it is getting better. When this first started, I was a waterhead on a daily basis. Um, there was, and it, particularly watching stories as everything played out on the news, that it just brought tears. And that was something I was okay with. Um, I, I understood that, you know, at some point I needed to step back and and get away from all of that but i also just let my emotions flow because it was the way i was feeling about the situation that we're in so understand you're gonna have and we all probably have already had a wealth of emotions um and your students your mentees are no different uh support a break from the news and uh, which i can speak first hand helps to manage anxiety and fear. Um, I am a person who likes to know what's going on. I like to kind of know what's coming, where we stand, but even um, wanting to, to keep abreast of what is going on, you can still overindulge to a point that's not healthy. And if you have a mentee in particular who is just like, oh, I don't want to hear all of that, and that's just, it's just more the same, it may sound like they're being dismissive of a very serious situation, but go ahead and, and just give them the benefit of the doubt that what they're doing is what's best for their own mental health. So, um, you know, let them know it's okay. I get it. You, taking all of that in is tough. And if you want to break from it, go ahead and take it. And my very favorite, remind your mentee that they are not in this alone. If I have said that once since we have been in this situation, I have probably said it a thousand times where I have told one person or another, you know, we're all in this together. We are, we're all in the same situation, so we are gonna stick together and we are gonna get through it. And I have said it to faculty, I've said it to students, I've said it to all kinds of people. I've said it to my family, and it's because it, it, it does feel better um, when you understand that you are not fighting, you know, an enemy by yourself, that we are all, um, in the same situation and fighting the same enemy. So don't hesitate to remind your mentee that that is the case. And uh, one of the most important, educate yourself. So I said this, this is a repeat. We did this back on August 1st. Um, and no, no, no not, uh, not August 1st. No, oh, no, it was August 1st. No, April 1st. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. I April mean, Fools. I, it, it, might, it might feel like it was August. I mean, who, I who cares, really? <laughs> <laughs> we did this workshop back on April 1st. And um, in putting it together, one of the things I was trying to do was, okay, let's see what's out there in terms of resources um, on Xavier's site to, to make the point about the importance of knowing what's out there. And I came across this video from Dr. McCall. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and play it. It's only a couple minutes, but it's worth playing. Then I'll tell you why I like it so much. Hello, Xavierites. My name is Anne McCall. I'm Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Xavier. I hope that you're doing well. I speak to you today in a period of uncertainty with growing losses. It's normal for all of us to be experiencing fear, anxiety, even anger over the losses we've already incurred and the uncertain challenges that lie ahead. 
It is never a better time than now for us to dig deep inside of ourselves for strength, to look to each other in our academic community for support, and to look at our heritage so that we can move forward together. Indeed, as a black and Catholic university founded in a period of intense racial oppression, we know what struggle looks like. And we can look to our ancestors, we can look to Xavier rights of the past for the courage that we need for our resolve. Xavier rights, we are two thirds through this semester. You have invested an immense amount of time in your work so far, and so have your faculty and staff. It's time to dig deep so that we can finish it together with success. In academic affairs, what does that mean? It means to hook into your classes, to be present with your faculty, to do your work. It means to check out all of the additional uh, resources that we have on our campus that support your success. We have our advising offices available online. We have academic resources available, such as our tutoring and our supplemental instruction. Our library's resources are online for you too, as well as workshops. Our career services has put all of its work online and has even created special workshops for this period. Please take advantage of all of them. We need to do this together as a community. Your deans and faculty are also working with me during this period to review our academic policies and procedures to see what it is that we can do to facilitate your learning and success. While we're doing all of this work separated physically from each other, please remember to check in on the Xavier website. And it, it includes all sorts of special resources for you, including instructions on how to access our apps such as EAB and MyZula. Please, Xavier Rights, exercise all the safety precautions that have been repeated to you. They matter. Xavier Rights, this is a test. It's a real one. Let's embrace it with our high expectations and the love that all of us know as Xavier Rights so that we can ace it together. Thank you so much. So believe it or not, I found this video after I put together this presentation. And the reason it resonated with me so much was because it hit so many of the points that I thought were important in terms of the message that should be conveyed to our students, our mentees, by our leadership. Number one, she acknowledged that we were in difficult times. She did not sugarcoat it. She did not make it seem less than it was. <clears throat> she basically said, this is tough. We're, we're in a tough situation. Um, she did that while encouraging. You know, you, you're already two thirds of the way through. You, you've done a lot of work, don't stop now. Um, and then she called for them to step up and fulfill their responsibility. So, you know, it's, it's up to you, pick it up, get the rest of the way through, do what it is you need to do to finish this, this right. Um, she listed resources. She talked about, you know, all the things that were there to support them in this situation as they attempted to finish up the semester and also um, made it clear that the university was here for our students, that we are looking at things that we can do to help you. So again, it's that message of you are not alone. Um, so I just thought in this less than three minute message, she did a great job of hitting all of the elements that I feel um, are extremely important when you are trying to convey, um, you know, a positive but, but accurate message in a time like this. Um, <clears throat> and also, just in terms of resources that I, I like. Um, there is the coronavirus update part of the Xavier website. That's, um, and as you can see from the picture, a lot of what Xavier pulls is from the CDC, but um, that is also a good place. And I will say about, cause it's like, oh my stars, who would send somebody to the CDC website, really? But you will find that the CDC has done a great job of putting out videos to the public that really can speak to the public. They are not these sort of high level bunch of scientific kinds of things. They are practical. They are short 
they are real world and they can, you know, they can kind of go a long way just to provide the information that you, your mentee, a student may need, but provide it in a way that helps to sort of, again, decrease that anxiety. It, it's kind of empowering in that, okay, I know that if I do this, this may help. So again, educating yourself about what is going on and those resources that are out there um, will go a long way in, in getting us through this situation. And my absolute favorite um, is practicing self-care. Um, again, if we want to be able to help our students, our mentees, we have got to take care of ourselves. Um, so first of all, you want to engage in activities that support your mental, emotional, and physical health. And what that is, is different for all of us. Um, I know we <clears throat> happen to have uh, more than a few uh, animal lovers in this room, and I know mine are a great source of just joy and comfort for me. Um, and so whatever it is you need to do to decrease your own anxiety, um, to decrease your own stress level, will go a long way in keeping you healthy and fit to be um, a support for your mentees. Uh, we've already said this, um, you cannot be as effective in your support if you are not um, at your maximum health in this situation. And I just want to reiterate, I think human nature is just to dig in and do what needs to be done. That's what we do, especially as Xavier writes. It's like, it, it's got to be done, let's do it. But this is a tough situation we're in. And I think we can easily lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, we, we really need support. We need to support one another. Uh, we in CAT, I love kind of watching it go full circle because we talk a lot about us being here to support faculty. And we take that very seriously. But when all is said and done and the Zoom lights are off, we support one another. We make sure you know, that we're okay, that one person is not being overloaded to the point of you know, you know, something detrimental. So we just like we want to be here to support our students, our mentees, we have to be supported also. Or, you know, there's nothing, we're gonna, not going to be any good to anyone else. So please don't forget self-care. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, we're going to finish up, and I do want to say and sincerely mean thank you. Um, this is from our website. We're in the midst of, um, you know, Give Love Xavier. And... Uh, do what you can if you can. And I just wanted to point out that you absolutely are the lifeline for our students. Um, and that seems like a lot of pressure and a big responsibility, but you continue to do what you're doing and, you know, it serves our students so well. So I sincerely mean thank you for that. And I thank you for coming um, to this workshop. This is our uh, Keep Teaching Zula Wiki, where there are incredible resources um, as we have moved online and things to support you in your teaching. So please take a look when you get a chance if you already haven't. And finally, um, you are going to get an evaluation shortly after this workshop is over. It's going to come via email. Please take a few minutes to tell us your thoughts about this um, because we need and appreciate your feedback. So thank you. Thank you, Tira. We appreciate it.